Good morning. Welcome to Charrington Baptist Church. We are about to begin. If you have a noisy phone, now is a good moment to make it slightly quieter. So, good morning. Uh, we are... This is a rather nice a thing that I've just put in yellow up at the front that says that we seek to be inspired by those who have walked with God in the past so that we may do the same today and tomorrow. Uh, the verse that the uh, adults will be looking at later is this one from Jeremiah that says, please stand, this is the Lord says, Stand at the crossroads and look and ask for the ancient paths, the paths where the good way lies, and then walk in it and find rest for your souls. There was quite a lot going on yesterday that was about ancient paths in the king's coronation. Not everything that the monarchy does is good, by the way, but there are some good things about following God that uh, leads to peace and to find uh, and leads to rest for our souls. Um, and therefore, uh, let's uh, begin by singing seek ye first the kingdom of God. That's the path I want to go down. And unfortunately, when you're going down this path, there isn't one that says, this is the kingdom of heaven, go this way. It's sort of a desire that we have in our hearts to go to the kingdom of God. And that if we seek that, I believe that God will direct our Parts. Um, I'm only going to do three verses. We'll do verse, chorus, verse, chorus, verse, chorus to give us time to think about um, uh, each verse, about seeking first the kingdom of God, about uh, not living by bread alone, but what we hear God telling us, and thirdly, to trust in the Lord with all our heart. Um, okay, I'm going to show you a rather funny, well, I think it's quite funny this. Okay. Uh, if you're used to me showing you uh, uh, videos about what Tear Fund, who incidentally get 5% of our income, what they do with our money, uh, it's normally completely serious. Uh, and this is a TV ad that they've put out. And um, you have to listen carefully because it's not what you expect. This is Burundi in Africa, and this is Cecile, who's walking to fetch water for her family. Oh, yeah, Steve. Oh, okay. Well, then what's in the bucket? <clears throat> this is the school that your donations built, brick by... Oh, then who built it? Of course. Your generous donation. Oh, yeah. Ah. This is the centre of the community that your donations... No, look, it's not, is it? OK, what did Tia Fun do? Uh-huh. Oh, well, that's much more helpful. So if you didn't catch that, is that it looked like a thing. And this is what your donations have built, this school. No, 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 no. We built this school. Um, uh, oh, this is what your donations built in terms of a hospital. No, 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 no. We built the hospital. Um, oh, here's a church. You must... Uh, no, no, Tear Fund didn't build that. And actually, the money that Tear Fund gives just went in to 
uh, give training to people who could then train other people who could then get the community galvanized so that they could build their own schools and build their own hospitals and yes we never did find out what was in that woman's bucket but anyway i yeah, i just thought it's really funny <laughs> that was her business that's right because yeah she was just getting on with business um i wonder whether that's seeking first the kingdom of god is and it's it's interesting because there's if you look at the paths there's a path that goes off to let's go and build somebody a school let's build them a hospital these are good things okay but if you seek first the kingdom of god you might find something even better than building somebody a hospital you'd get the community to come together in such a way that they can build their own hospital uh, and that's that's the ancient way of listening to god for what the best way is and um now yesterday uh some uh some people watching it in here but there's uh, king charles with his crown on his head and the thing that i most liked about that was here's somebody who is our head of state this is somebody uh, called John having a vision of what God might be like I saw heaven standing open and there before me was a white horse whose rider is called faithful and true and with justice he judges and he wages war on all that is evil his eyes are like blazing fire and on his head are many crowns not just one like charles has got he has a name written on him that no one knows except himself there's something unknowable about god that we serve there are things that we do know about justice and faithful and truth but there's so much more that, about god that we do not know that we are uh, uh, gathered here in humility knowing that we don't know everything uh, we just want to listen to the voice of the one who's on the horse he's dressed in a robe that's dipped in blood both other people's and his own and his name is the word of god because we believe, yes, there is a Bible that's a word in print, but we believe in the word made flesh that is alive and dwelling among us. The armies of heaven were following him. They were riding on white horses. They were dressed in fine linen, white and clean. And coming out of his mouth is a sharp sword with which to strike down uh, the power of the nations and anything that is a power base other than God's. He will rule them with an iron scepter. He treads the winepress of the fury of the wrath of God Almighty. And on his robe and on his thigh, he has the name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. I asked uh, Polly what song she would like this uh, church to sing. And it's about the splendor, not of King Charles, but the splendor of king jesus and she says that when we sing it it makes the hairs on her head uh the back of her neck sort of go woo and it sort of gets us together is that about right Polly? anything else you'd like to say it gives us a strong feeling that god is with us this is our god and he is with us uh, during this period, there's 10 passages from the book of uh, Jeremiah between April and June that we're going through. And I've just got various passages from chapters four to nine um, that I've sort of cherry picked the ones that I felt were mo seemed most pertinent to me and to uh, life in the 21st century. Um, so this is the this is the verse. And I put this in the church family email and I basically asked whether you 
whether this resonates with you, whether there have been times in the past where this is what you've sought to do, where you've been at some form of crossroads, some form of decision making, and you've genuinely wanted to do the right thing. It wasn't obvious what that was. But this advice uh, or this command from the Lord to seek the ancient paths, to find where the good way is and to walk in that, which will give rest for your soul. Uh, what I suggest is just think about it if you haven't done so already of whether that's been your experience and if there's anything you'd like to share with everybody do come to the microphone here or unmute yourself on zoom and tell us what it is but um, let's think and be grateful for what's happened in our past Uh, Vanessa's uh, route last week took her to Yarmouth and Yarmouth was a good place just show us the t-shirt again is I must say the that you're only one there's sort of a cross in there that's sort of there's only one Jesus and there's only one Vanessa and that's okay there's a sort of giving yourself peace that is Thank you very much for sharing that, Vanessa. My own reflection on this during the coronation yesterday was that it seems to me that over since 1066, which is when I believe the first coronation took place in Westminster Abbey, and Charles is the 40th person to have been crowned in Westminster Abbey, if one wants to look for all the, the bad things that have been done by the monarchy in this country, is, you know, there's shed loads of bad stuff that has taken place uh, by monarchs who've sat in the place where Charles has sat. In one sense, you could say, we need to distance ourselves from, from the ancient paths. We, we need to grow up. We need to dispense with all the bad things that have happened in our history. And an amen to that. seems to me that the asking for the ancient paths is to say was was there anything that they did that was right that was good it seems to me as i was listening to the coronation service that there was so much in the service that's good is when he took off all his trappings of power and just came before came before God as a human being and said, I need your help, which is what the anointing was. That's a good thing. And the fact that that's happened in all of these coronations, this is an ancient path that I want to tread. And in fact, and just for electoral uh, uh, 
uh, uh, balance is that I did put up three Labour councillors earlier and I thought, oh, does this look as though that this church is endorsing the Labour candidates? Uh, honestly, I put them up because they're our councillors and we need to pray for them. So let me just say something really positive about Conservatives because I, I listened to a podcast last week which I've never come across this chain of thought before. Is that this person said the reason why they're, they're a Conservative politician, the reason they're a Conservative, is because there's some things that have happened in the past in this country that are really, really good and we need to conserve them. And strangely for me, I found myself saying yes in, 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 in a way that I'd never done before. Because what I heard him say was there are some things that are good that I want to conserve. Rather than I want to conserve everything, is when you look at what's in this country or in this church, we need to be people who conserve what is good and treasure it. To my mind, we also need to root out what is not good. And if there has been a bias towards the rich, possibly done in the name of, of the, the wealthy and the powerful in this country, we need to be the people that say Jesus came to give good news to the poor and that maybe if that hasn't happened in the past, we want to, to conserve what's good, but we also want to um, be forces for change as well. But it's saying a definite yes to both. And, and anyway, I, to actually say, no, there is something about the ancient paths that are good. And just to say, yes, there's something about this monarchy that is good with a capital G. And that's not to say that there aren't some things that are bad with a capital B as well, and that we need to reform those. But anyway, I, I, for me, I found that a liberating moment that actually the next time somebody says that they're passionate about being conservative i there's part of me now that i can say yes to just as when somebody says that their their version of socialism of about bias and looking after the disadvantaged that i want to say yes to that i can now say yes to part of both people and that's for me that was uh yes i not i was standing at a crossroads and i can see good in a whole load of ways now the way god is going to ask me to to vote in future now that's just a <laughs> yes yeah, so i'm just going to have to listen to the to the voice of god but um anyway i found it very restful for my soul to, I think I heard something of the voice of God. Um, uh, before we move on, any other uh, experiences of asking for the ancient paths? A similar reflection on the coronation the other day um, while, while watching it. There was a bit where Charles was handed all kinds of uh, symbolic items which were quite interesting. Uh, there was one bit where he had two rods in his hand uh, and Leo pointed out to me, it's nice that even a child can notice this symbolism, right? But I hadn't noticed it. But Leo pointed out to me, that one's longer, which was nice because he had two rods. One was about, um, I believe one was about justice and power, those kind of ideas. And the other one, the longer one was about equity and about mercy and that being inbuilt in the symbolism because it looked unbalanced right and the idea that um i guess as a king you might well be unbalanced in the opposite direction and so there being a point at which there is this visible symbol whereby you're going if you're going to be unbalanced right remember the mercy let that weigh you down uh, and i like that even a child can pick that up that that one's bigger
Okay. Um, as two other, three other points that I think I've got that came out of these chapters of Jeremiah. Uh, here's some verses from chapter six. Uh, and this is, Jeremiah is not a very conservative prophet. Uh, he's saying, look, there's something seriously wrong here. There's something seriously wrong. He says, look from the least to the greatest. I see in everybody greed for gain. Prophets and priests alike all practice deceit. And if you're going for greed and you're looking after number one, one of the things that you'll probably have to do in order to gain stuff for yourself is start lying to yourself about what the right thing is. I think probably the first lie that you tell is the lie that you tell yourself that it's okay for me not to help that person. It's okay for me to to barge the other person out of the way. And then you probably, from those lies that you tell yourself, end up by, by telling lies to other people. Um, in this particular case, the prophet and the priests are saying, now everything's fine, everything's fine, because I'm doing very well out of the status quo. And actually, the lie that they were saying is that now, everything's fine everything's peace we're living in a good country at the moment and nothing needs to change which is a bad form of conservatism everything's okay no 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 everything is not okay there are some things that are wrong and and if those that are benefiting from the status quo are, are being greedy for for their own gain are saying peace, peace, where there is no peace. It's a, it's a dangerous lie. Um, so they dress the wound of my people as though it wasn't serious. Peace, peace, they say, where there is no peace. Are they not ashamed of their detestable conduct? No, they've got no shame at all. They don't even know how to blush because the lies they tell themselves become the reality that they live in. And they stop feeling ashamed for the lies they tell. To begin with, they probably were a little bit ashamed of, of, of their greed and their, their outlook on life. But if you tell lies long enough, you stop feeling uncomfortable by your lies. Um, I could give some examples here, but I'd really like you to dig in your own heart for, for either you doing that or you knowing people that are doing this. Because um, this, is, this is, seems to me an eternal truth, is that, that when people are not seeking first the kingdom of God and just seeking something that's selfish, they have to stop telling the truth about what's really important. And that that's a lie that this money will make me happy. This food will make me happy. This alcohol will make me happy. That, that, that's the lies that we say and other people say, and we need to stop doing it. And we need to be embarrassed by the lies that we say. And yes. They don't know how to blush. So they will fall among the fallen and they will be brought down when I punish them. Because it seems to me that if you tell lies for long enough, there are consequences. And there are consequences that are built into the universe uh, by, by the Lord God. And that this is, this is his punishment. Uh, Uh, so I'd just like to pause for a moment um, and just ask God the question is, what lies am I saying to myself that I need to repent of because I'm looking at something other than the kingdom of God?
So God be in my head and in my understanding. God be in my thinking. And then God be in my speaking. And in particular, I pray that there might be truth in what I think and in what I say. And thank you, Heavenly Father, for our consciences that can alert us to the fact that we're not being true. What we pray for ourselves, we pray for other people, that they might live more truthful lives, that they might know the truth that will set them free Uh, and I pray that we would be good traveling companions with those who are trying to get themselves out of a mess of, of lies and deceit. Uh, Heavenly Father, please give us that long rod of mercy. Uh, may that be the the dominant thing in all our reactions to others who are struggling with the truth. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, um, so truth is one casualty of when we don't seek first the kingdom of God. Uh, the second one, I, it seems to me, is, is justice. This uh, runs all the way through the book of Jeremiah, but here are some verses from chapter 7. If you really want to change your ways and live in the truth, if you want to change your ways and your actions, then you need to deal with each other justly. And the way to do that is you don't oppress foreigners, don't oppress the fatherless, don't oppress the widows, do not shed innocent blood in your place. It seems to me in this land of Israel, this, this land of those who are seeking the kingdom of God. This should be an oppression-free zone if we are people that are living in the kingdom. And in this place is that we should not follow any other gods, putting things in the place of God. And then I will let you live in this place, in the land that I gave to your ancestors forever and forever. Uh, uh, my feeling is that this tends to involve my shopping habits. Uh, it, it tends to be the way in which I react to people that are different from me, who are foreign to me. Um, foreign in their love of football. I mean, they don't have, you know, okay, doesn't, they don't have to not, not be English. Um, just, just, um, I, I'm into classical music, actually. Pop music is, is sort of a foreign language. Um, Deb is trying to educate me at the moment of sending me tracks each, each week, but you know, it's sort of a foreign language. And there's a thing that we do to, to people and groups that are, seem foreign to us that is, there's a nastiness that can come out of a self-righteousness of I'm right that we just need to nip that in the bud and see it for what it is. Um, and for oh yes, the fatherless, people that maybe don't have that strong support of father, those that don't have the strong support of husband or wife, Again, just a moment of, uh, you know, are the goods that we purchase on the back of sweatshops in parts of the world is fair trade is sort of really important. Um, if we want to be truthful, then we need to 
live justly. Heavenly Father, I'd like to rejoice in all the ways in which that there is less oppression of foreigners uh, in our country. Uh, and I know there's still a uh, way to go, but thank you for all those things that we see that were broadcast on TV in the 70s, 80s and 90s that just wouldn't happen nowadays. Thank you for the for the real progress that has been made and we repent of those things that we are still part of where there is oppression of others and discrimination and not treating other people as though they are made in your image uh, but we thank you for that ancient path of knowing that uh, we are created in the image of God, male and female, you created us. Thank you that in Christ there is no uh, slave nor free, no male or female, no Jew nor Gentile. Thank you for the ways in which that that has been embodied and put into practice and we pray that we would live in those truths and uh, live more just and less oppressive lives uh, in the future for we ask it in Jesus name amen um, just a, a pause to uh, think about what uh, uh, what it is to uh, act justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with our God. Um, uh, the final thing, and incidentally we'll be singing uh, fairly shortly, so um, you might want to just stay where you are, uh, musicians, is that uh, the final thing that struck me in these first uh, chapters 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9 of, of Jeremiah was how God reacts when other people don't live properly, when they deceive themselves and when they uh, don't act justly. And there are times in the Old Testament where you tend to think of this Old Testament God of being God of vengeance that just sort of is just really cross and angry and just sort of comes up with this wrath. And this is a beautiful passage of, of Chris's thing about the the mercy rod is, is longer than that justice uh, rod. So basically, and, and what I want you to do is to think of somebody who's really messing up their own life and probably messing up other people's lives as well. And it's their own fault. I mean, they're choosing to do it and that they're unrepentantly doing it. And they're, they're obviously deceiving themselves in terms of what's really right. And they are suffering the consequences of it. And this, this is what God says to such people. And he refers to them as my people. So what the, earlier when we were doing the Lord's Prayer, it's our Father. You identify with the people you're praying for. So when you're saying, give us today our daily bread, you're putting yourself next to the person that needs the bread 
as well as you. And he says, give us, because we need it. Please forgive us our sins, including the person that's unrepentant of it. Please forgive us, because I'm with them. I'm, I'm related to them. I'm, and God feels that about us. We're still his people. Since my people are crushed, I am crushed. I mourn. Their horror grips me. Is there no healing balm in Gilead, which is where they'd normally find it, coming out of the trees? Is there no physician there? Why is there no healing? Because there is balm in Gilead and there is physicians. So, you know, the healing should be there. Why is there no healing? No healing for the wound of my people. Oh, that my head were a spring of water and my eyes were a fountain of tears. I would weep day and night for the slain of my people. Oh, that I had in the desert a lodging place for travelers so that I might leave my people and go away from them because the pain is just so intense. Because they're all adulterers, they're all a crowd of unfaithful people. They make ready their tongues like a bow to shoot lies. It's not by truth that they triumph in the land. They just go from one sin to another. They don't acknowledge me, declares the Lord. Oh, that my head were a spring of water, my eyes were a fountain of tears. I would weep day and night for the slain of my people. And I, I just commend this passage to it's the next time somebody's really nasty to you or they're messing up their lives and your life. Just remember this, that a way of dealing with your anger against them, because they should pay that they're just being, is to weep with them and seeing the sorrow of them in their lives. And... Um, that's what this, this song is. Um, when we do, a, this is a fairly depressing song about a whole load of stuff that's wrong um, in life where parents have rejected children, where, I mean, it, it, yes, where we've scorned truth, where uh, we haven't loved weak and helpless people where there's violence, where there's people have been rejected. Um, and, and God is, there are depths of sorrow in the father heart of God because we're still his children. They, whoever the person you're thinking of, who's causing such havoc, from Putin downwards at the moment, you know. There's deep, deep sorrow in the Father heart of God for all people that deny their real humanity. Uh, and it's worth, if, if, if after four verses you're ready to think, oh, this is dreadful, um, verse five is worth waiting for. There is a man of sorrows who for sin has shed his blood. He can heal the wound of nations. He can wash the guilty clean. And because of Jesus, uh, he will have mercy on us. And it's, um, it's a staggeringly good uh, song, this. But it's heart-wrenching. But, but dealing with things that aren't good in the world is heart-wrenching, and there's no way around that, sorry. Is a promise. It says, if you return to me, and if you remove your abominations from my presence and don't waver, and if you swear as the Lord lives in truth, in justice, and, an upright, and in uprightness, then nations shall be blessed by the Lord, and by the Lord they shall boast. If we get this right, we shall fulfill the Abrahamic uh, uh, promise that by uh, you, Abraham, shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. Um, 
And uh, so if we uh, go to the old ways of truth and justice and compassion, uh, then the world will be a better place and we'll, we'll all be living in the kingdom of God uh, uh, where one who is above all kingdoms and above all thrones is Lord of our lives. And uh, yes, uh, may you know the blessing of truth. May you know the blessing of justice. And may you know the blessing of compassion because you serve the King of Kings today and every day forever. Amen.